To start out, I wanna show you something you can do if you're more familiar with something like Lightroom. So when we add an adjustment layer, I'm just gonna add a curves for this one. You'll notice it does create a mask with that adjustment layer. So now we can apply some sort of change to this. I'll just up the brightness a little bit and drag that up, close that out. And now if we come over and either press G or come over to your gradients over here and then come up and we're gonna adjust the gradient so that it's just gonna be a white to black spread. Now, if we just click and drag, you can see that the mask is now being applied with our gradient, just like it would be in Lightroom. So if you're more familiar with something like Lightroom and you haven't really done this sort of editing before, this is a great place to start. So now we can just adjust these around and get something that we like. Maybe I just wanna lighten up the ground here. And the best part about this is if we double click on our layer here, we can still go back in and adjust anything that we wanted to adjust. And with that, you can also come up and change the different types of gradients that you have. So we just have a linear gradient right now, but we could also have a radial gradient or an elliptical or anything you'd like. So we can come in here and do a radial gradient if we wanted to have our subject be a little bit more in focus. And we can adjust that. And there you go. So this is just a nice thing to do if you've only ever worked in something like Lightroom. This might be a little bit more familiar to you. The next tip I have is if you are ever struggling with where to start with your color grade, the place you should always start is with the contrast. Now you can do this in whatever way you're most comfortable with. I usually like to use the curves, so I will add a curves adjustment layer here. And so now we can adjust the contrast with here. We can start out by just starting with something like an S curve, and you can definitely come in here and change some more things and make it exactly how you want. You can kind of think about this as like your big brush strokes before you get into the smaller details of a painting. And the reason you want to start with contrast is it's a great starting point to give you a general tone with your color grade and it will allow you to get a good start for when you actually get into color adjustments. And some tips with the contrast, if you're using the curves, I usually just like to start out with a nice subtle S curve like this. And if you're not comfortable with the curves, maybe you're not as familiar with it, you can definitely just come in and do something like a brightness and contrast and then just adjust it from here, and this will still give you a pretty great starting point for any sort of color grade that you want to do past this point. But this is pretty much the thing I always start with with a color grade, is I will pretty much always just come right to the curves layer, do some simple contrast adjustments, and then I will move on from there. Moving on to our next tip, and that is pretty much whenever you're in doubt with your color grade, be sure to use your scopes. If you've ever worked in the develop tab before, or you've seen my other videos, you'll probably know that you have your scopes and histograms up here in the develop tab. But did you know you can also get those in the photo persona? All you have to do is come up to view, studio, and then come down to scope. And there you go. Now you can see your scopes inside your photo persona. Now from here, all you have to do is come into the drop down and you can select any scopes that you want. Now, without boring you by going over all the different types of scopes, I'll tell you the three that I use most and the ones that you'll probably use the most as well. So the first one I use quite a bit is going to be the intensity waveform, which is actually the one we're on right here. This is just a great way of telling your exposure. So for example, if I add an exposure adjustment layer, you can see as we adjust some things, you can see now it's way blown out because we're touching the very top here, which means it's pure white. Or if we drag it to the bottom here, you can see that we have a very thin line at the bottom showing that we're very underexposed. Basically with this, you just wanna make sure you're not touching the top or the bottom too much, and that will really help you get the perfect exposure. Moving on to the next scope I wanna talk about, and that is going to be the RGB Parade. Now this one is pretty similar to the intensity waveform, but this time you can actually see the colors of it. So you can actually see the red, green, and blue. And this is great for when you start messing around with colors, because this will tell you if you're going too far over with a certain color. So this will basically just allow you to see like, oh, there's too much red in my image. I might want to bring that back a little bit and so on and so forth. But moving on to the last scope that I use, and that's going to be the vector scope. So this is just another scope of seeing exactly what colors are in your image and if you're going overboard with some certain colors. But the main thing that I use this scope for is skin tones. So as you can see, we have a red, magenta, blue, and so on, but we also have an eye up here. And what that eye is, is that is our skin tone line. And you can see with this little part right here that our skin tones are pretty close to touching that line. Whenever you're messing around with your color grade, you wanna make sure that your skin tones are either touching that line or at least on that line. Skin tones are really important in an image, so you wanna make sure that they're staying natural, and this scope will definitely help with that. So for example, if we were to add something like an HSL slider in here, and we were to shift our hue a little bit, as you can see, these skin tones here have now moved away from that line, and you can see that our skin tones are pretty green now, and it doesn't look very natural. 
So this is a great way of seeing exactly where you need to put your skin tones. And I understand that scopes can be kind of hard to read at times. If you guys want a dedicated video on this, let me know and I can definitely go a lot more in depth with each of the different scopes. But if you have just a basic understanding like this, it can definitely take you a long way and help out your color grades and making sure that you're not going overboard with certain things and making sure things still look natural. So the next tip I have is to actually separate your subject and your background and work on them separately. So what I mean by this is if we make a selection of your subject here, we can come up and do the selection brush tool and we'll just make a quick selection of our subject here. And if you want to, you can come up and hit refine. If you want a little bit more of an accurate selection, we can come in here and just kind of mess around with this. Make sure everything is being selected. I do have a dedicated video on this if you guys want to learn a little bit more on how this works. But that looks mostly fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. But for the output, all we're going to do is come down and hit new layer with mask. And then we're just going to hit apply. And as you can see, that created a new layer with a mask. So now that our subject is cut out and we can re-enable our background layer. And now we can add any adjustments we want to each of the separate things, whether we just want to adjust our subject or we just want to adjust our background. So for example, if I were to add a curves layer and drag it so that the highlight is tabbed over instead of like this, it's going to be tabbed over. That's basically going to put it inside that group and we can tab down and see that our curves adjustment is now in here. And now anything we do with this curves adjustment is just going to affect our subject. And you can do this with any of the adjustment layers you want. So for example, if we wanted to add an HSL slider in there as well, and we can come over and select something like the yellows and we can adjust the color of our jacket if we wanted to. And this way it's not affecting anything else in the background because we do have some yellow things that are not being affected. So I'm just gonna adjust this and play around with something that I like. Maybe just something like that. And now we can also come in to our background and we can add an adjustment on there as well just by dragging our adjustment layer into that part so it creates a group. Now we can add adjustments to our background without affecting our subject. Just like that. So now you might be wondering if you wanted to add an adjustment that affects everything globally. So something that would affect everything and not just the separate background or foreground. All you have to do is whatever adjustment you add, just make sure it's not in either of those groups and it's above everything else. And then this way we can edit just like we would anything else. This really helps keep the subject exactly how you want them to look so that you don't have to add a mask to every adjustment layer that you're adding because some things might affect the skin tones or it might change the color of something in their shirt that you don't like. This is just a great way to work on the background and subject separately. The last tip I'm going to leave you guys with is one I actually briefly mentioned in my five tools for color grading video, and that is to use color theory to your advantage when you're color grading. So by that, I basically mean to use complementary colors or a triad of colors or even just monochromatic colors in your color grade. This is basically just a surefire way to make sure that all of your colors are going to work well together. So just like I showed in that video, if you guys head over to color.adobe.com, you can actually see all the different color harmony rules that you can use in your color grade. So for example, with this one, we have complementary colors and the colors I have selected here are basically just an orange and teal look. But all you have to do to find some colors that you like is just drag these around and you'll get some complementary colors that you could use in your color grade. So let's say, for example, we wanted this in our color grade. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to bring this window over here. And then in Affinity Photo, I'm going to add a gradient map. And I'm going to delete the middle one here. And then with this gradient map, pretty much everything on the left here is going to be your shadows and everything on the right is going to be your highlights. So let's say, for example, we wanted to add, we'll say this pink or purple into our shadows. So we'll come over and select that color of our shadows. And then we can click and drag this little eyedropper over here. And then when we let go, it will select that color. And then all you have to do is click on it to apply it. Then we'll come over to our highlights and then we'll do the same thing with one of these. We'll just select that green and do that. And now that's applied with our gradient map. And I'm going to full screen this again and it looks pretty weird right now, but all we have to do is come over here and we'll put it into soft light for this one. Then we can adjust our opacity to see how much we actually want to put in our color grade. So something like this would work. And one more thing I wanted to show you is you don't have to use a gradient map with all those. You can just use the color harmonies as kind of a guideline. Well, if we wanted to do split toning instead, we can add that and then we can still use our complementary colors in here. We had that green in our highlights, so we can pump that into our highlights a little bit and we can put that purple into our shadows. 
and we can mess around with that and we can mess around with the balance as well for whatever we want to add to it we can close that out and now we basically have the same sort of look but just with split toning and we didn't have to select those colors from that color wheel but with this one don't be afraid to mess around with all the different color harmonies as well i mostly do complementary colors in my color grade but sometimes you can get a little bit more creative and use something like a triad and you can apply these colors to your color grade as well so a quick example of that is if we wanted to select this triad here we'll come over into our affinity photo and then for this one we'll just mess around with the gradient map again and we can apply the colors in here. So let's say in this case, we'll put this kind of purple into our shadows. We'll put this yellow into our midtones, and we can put that blue into our highlights. And now that we have this, we'll just do everything that we did before. We'll put it in soft light, and then we can adjust the opacity and mess around with it however we would like. So really, don't be afraid to get creative with these. This is just a really quick example I showed you, but you can definitely go a lot more in depth with these and applying them however you would like. But that pretty much does it for these tips. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.